Although synesthesia is rare, everybody will know somebody who has synesthesia. You don't necessarily know who that person is unless you go around saying, what colour is Monday to you? Or what colour does that sound have, for example? You wouldn't necessarily know that somebody experiences the world in a fundamentally different way. So for me, synesthesia is a sensory experience that I have all the time. So it's not something I think about a lot. Um, I think I experience it in two ways, both as a reaction to the world around me and an experience of things um, that I see and do. But it's also, on the other hand, a way that I visualise the world and see it um, in my head. It's quite a strange thing to, I think, understand and there's not really a language around it either, which is why I might have difficulty describing it to you, because if you don't experience it, you can't ever imagine what, what it's like at all. This is what my alphabet looks like. A, bright red. B, bright blue. C, yellow. Orange. Red, pink, dark, blue. Dark, dark, orange, dark, orange, dark, orange, yellow, yellow green, red, blue. Light, dark, dark, blue. dark, purple. I also visualise the way that letters are laid out in an alphabet. And that also works for every, every calendar, so every um, way that humans see um, the world through numbers. It's something that really typifies the way that I, in particular, see the world. It's completely solidified and concrete in my brain. I'm Jamie Ward, I'm a professor of cognitive neuroscience at the University of Sussex. And for many decades now, I've been fascinated by the phenomenon of synesthesia. One of the defining features of synesthesia is that they're extra sensations tagged on to sensory experiences. It's a special way of experiencing the world and most of the time we think of synesthesia as being rather neutral or perhaps being pleasant. If I could get rid of Eilers ticker tape I think I would because it has a negative impact more than it has a positive impact for her although Isla has said that she wouldn't want it to change despite these difficulties. I'm Isla and I'm 11. My favourite things to do are probably play computer games and go trampoline and have a play with my dog. I'm Julie, I'm married with three children and my youngest daughter has synesthesia. We know that there are strong connections in the brain between the sounds of words and their spellings. And th this is probably true of everybody. It's what enables normal kind of literacy. But for some people, what you then have is that these connections are almost experienced as mental images. And this has been referred to as ticker tape synesthesia because it resembles the kind of uh, Times Square kind of news headlines flashing by. When lots of people are speaking, lots of people are speaking, 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 people are speaking,
Now, of course, that might be rather different in children or adolescents who maybe haven't developed those strategies or in which the brains haven't matured in, in the same way. So it may well be the case that uh, although the synesthesia doesn't necessarily change over time, that people gain the ability to kind of selectively attend into it or selectively tune it out. Hello, I'm LJ Rich, I'm a musician, I'm an inventor and I'm a broadcaster. I've had synesthesia my whole life, but I only realised that other people didn't have it a few years ago, actually. I see colour when I hear music, I taste music when I eat food, and a lot of my senses are mixed together and it allows for some pretty unconventional experiences on my part compared to lots of people, but also I think it's an amazing source for creativity. So, the piece is called Flying Through Colour. I imagine flying over mountainous landscapes and across the sea. So, it's, it's that kind of feeling when you are in a cloud. It was actually quite a relief to find out that I had this thing and it had a name. For so many years I worried that other people were able to handle the world just so much better than me. How come I was feeling so overloaded by everything? And accepting that as a characteristic that I have in the same way that I have green eyes was actually a massive relief and allowed me to explore these new ways of experiencing the world and I then started creating musical installations that would attempt to connect people to a musical experience regardless of how musical they were and it seemed to be received very well. <laughs> 